Hello again, this is uh, MKS Seamaster, and I'm here for showing you how to use the automated tile tool as well as finishing up the rest of your track using the manual tile placement and the starting positions options. So first of all, um, I went ahead and added the walls at the edge of the track. Uh, as you can see here, they need to be there because if they're not, then the out of bounds areas um, they're accessible and that's kind of annoying and also very unprofessional so you want to have those walls there um, so basically once you have all the walls here and everything like that and there's no more else to there's nothing else to edit um, you're gonna be going into the automated tile placement now you're gonna press the apostrophe until you see oh sorry not the apostrophe the um, backwards uh, backslash until you see this number here at range change to 512. Once it does, um, just press 2 to go to mud and then just click anywhere on the dirt. As you can see, that changes all of the walls and everything like that to be basically multicolored and it's done quite professionally by the program itself. Um, you can also use that as you already saw in the previous video for designing corners and things like that. most use you're going to have for this tool however is for putting the colors into the walls and for designing both the corners in Mario Circuit and various other things in different tracks. It depends on the tile set you are using but for Mario Circuit it's mostly going to be for corners and for walls. So now we pretty much finished our track so what we're going to do really quick is we're gonna go and go back to the manual tile placement for a second so once we've gotten back to the manual tile placement we're gonna select our finish line and we're gonna put that in so let's put our finish line right here now having the graphic doesn't really mean much as I already explained in the previous video because the graphic doesn't do do anything at all it's all something you actually have to put in so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna press F3 and we're going to quickly go to the lap indicator option. Now in the lap indicator option we are going to hold down F and we're going to put this purple line in the very middle of the finish line. Next we're going to click about f three or four tiles away from the blue, uh, sorry, the purple line and we're going to drag this so that it, me it matches the walls here. Doing it this way makes it so that the lap will always count as long as you have two walls like this and it makes it harder for players to abuse the system so they will not be able to skip laps. If for example I had taken this all the way to here like this what would happen is a player could for example let me just show you they could decide that they want to drive around this area here I don't know if you can see me moving my mouse around it, but if they decide to uh, drive around there, that would count as actually driving a lap. So again, just have it extend a little bit past the wall there, or have it just extend to the wall here. That works as well. So now we're going to go back to our track design area. Um, we have everything set, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make a starting position uh, graphic. So we're going to grab this one here, this one here, this one here. You'll get used to seeing the um, tile set a bit more frequently once you get used to it. Um, they're in different spots on each one but you'll probably be able to find them quite quickly if you look at them just by pressing enter and making it bigger. Um, so now that we've got that, um, here comes the som somewhat important part. We're going to press F1 and we're going to press space to go to the starting positions area. Now we're going to set our starting position. I am going to set it to right here as you already had seen um, so what we're gonna do now um, we're gonna copy that little um, starting position line that we made a minute ago and we're gonna press F1 and put our mouse a little bit ahead of the purple dot press F2 again and place it do the same thing for each of them
Now, as you can see, we have a finished starting line. We have all the starting positions, and we also have the finish line. Press F1 again to go back to where the purple dots are and make sure they're completely centered with the starting positions, so that way you'll start directly in front of them. So now that we've got that, we've pretty much finished with everything you can do in this area here. So now that we've finished our track, we can go and press F2 again, and we're going to go to the fourth option, the Grand Prix mode object placement. I've already placed a few objects here just to show what it's like. Um, I'll show you really quickly how to place objects, but this is really something you have to experiment with yourself to see how it works. Um, okay, so basically to place an object, what you're going to do is be in this mode, obviously, and then hold down control and left click. You've created an object now. Now, basically, what you're going to do from there is you can either go through the 2x2 two two options, which are the ones that we're currently in right now, and press F and G. F moves it backwards, G moves it forward, so we can see all the different types of things we can make. You will run into a few garbage tiles, as you probably won't see if I'm in this one here, but you can just safely ignore them and look for the ones you actually want to use. The other thing you can do is press T, and that will bring you to the 5x5 five five tiles. Now the 5x5 five five tiles are slightly useful as this is where all the good coins um, are stored. If you go from the beginning and press G, you're going to get a bunch of garbage tiles, as I already mentioned. But once you get past them, you're going to get all the useful coins. I've already placed my items, so I'm not going to place any more. But that is the general idea of how you are going to use Grand Prix mode objects. Again, these objects will only be seen when you're in Grand Prix mode, and they will not be seen when you're in time trial mode. This concludes the third part of my tutorial videos. Um, I will see you next video for explanations on how to use zones and for behavioral item placement.